So today we're here to talk to you about a function that is essential to the body, sleep. So what happens if you're not getting proper sleep? Doctor, can you please explain some of the common sleep disorders that people face? Yes, but for understanding common sleep disorders, we must know what is the normal sleep. So overview of sleep is like this, that uh, in five to six hours normal sleep, we tend to have five to six sleep cycles, hmm? each lasting for 90 minutes to two hours. In the sleep cycle, a normal sleep is divided into in each cycle in two zones. One is non-rapid eye movement sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. As the name indicates, in this sleep, the eye movements are not rapid and it is a light sleep. Whereas, the rapid eye movement sleep is the deep sleep. So, the disorders are categorized like insomnia or difficulty in getting or maintaining the sleep. Secondly, hypersomnia. If I get up in the morning, I don't have any desire to work, I tend to feel sleepy excessive sleepiness and the third thing parasomnias the behavioral disorders which are seen in NREM sleep as well as REM sleep so in NREM sleep non-rapid eye movement sleep we see the interesting phenomena like sleep talking hmm, uh, sleep walking these are the disorders seen in non-rapid eye movement sleep whereas in rapid eye movement sleep what you commonly see is the nightmares uh, rapid eye movement sleep is more uh, during the early morning time Hence, the people tend to see more nightmares at that time. Hypnogogic and hypnopompic hallucinations. For example, there are hallucinations, hearing of voices tend to happen in normal people. Hmm? It happens when you are falling asleep or when you are getting up from the sleep. These are the normal hallucinations. Someone is hearing or calling your name. So, these kind of hallucinations are also tend to happen in the rapid eye movement sleep. Some people experience some sort of paralysis that is called a sleep paralysis. It tends to happen in rapid eye movement sleep. And most important to diagnose, the penile tumescence or penile erections tend to happen in rapid eye movement sleep. So when does someone know that they should go to the doctor to be considered for a sleep disorder as opposed to just having a couple of nights of bad sleep? But not two nights bad sleep is common to all. But what we say when one should visit a doctor, if they are not getting persistent sleep or there is a sleep disturbance, excessive sleepiness in the morning, these behavioral problems tend to happen three times a week and this is persistent for one month, then they should visit a doctor. Some people, for example, who are suffering from jet lag, shift duties, they tend to visit us earlier. And uh, in some cases, although the disorder may not be so chronic for one month, but if it is disturbing to sleep, other partner, for example, if the person is talking in the sleep, sleep talking, sleep walking, then also patient come to visit the doctor. So how would you go about diagnosing a sleep disorder? Yes, uh, sleep is overall indicator of the health. So once the patient comes for the sleep disorder, uh, we should rule out other disorders as well. In major mental or major physical disorder, the first indicator is the sleep to evaluate because most of the disorders involve sleep. So we tend to take out the detailed history from the patient as well as from the relatives. Secondly, uh, once the history is clear about how much the person is sleeping, is he a short sleeper or a long sleeper? There are uh, two kinds of people. The people who sleep for four to six hours and still are energetic are the short sleepers. So this is the one need to take. And there are long sleepers who, who sleep for eight to nine hours and still they don't feel energetic. So that basic history one has to look up. Secondly, if the person is depressed, if the person is suffering from psychosis, it's the primary problem which need to be treated. If the person is suffering from hyperthyroidism or diabetes mellitus or some pain is there, we need to address it first. Third thing, what we should require, are there any extrinsic factors? Some noise is happening in the surrounding, excessive lights are there, person may not get sleep. So history is of paramount importance. After history, what comes is, there is a specific investigation, what we do is called as polysomnography. In the polysomnography, when instrument is attached to patient, it records eye movement, it records muscle movements, it records their respiration to know exactly what problem is. Okay, so let's say then uh, you treat whatever you need to treat, um, but what about for the patients where the sleep disorder is the primary issue? How would you go about treating that? Yes, uh, we talk something about sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is basically uh, the conglomeration of good sleeping habits. So what we tell to these people, fix up routine that you are going to bed at this time, you are getting up from the bed at this time. If you are not getting sleep on, on lying down on the bed, please get up after 15-20 minutes, go to other room, start doing some other activities. Exercise is encouraged in the morning time, but no exercise in the evening time. 
no caffeine intake after 5 pm smoking should be restricted as it is a stimulant if still it's not happening we are not seeing the changes we ask these person people to take a warm bath 2 hours prior to sleep a high tryptophan snack for example a glass of milk to be taken 1 hour prior to sleep and bed should be used only for sleeping not for other activities like watching tv reading one hour prior to sleep the light and sound stimulation is cut down these are the few techniques usually what we incorporate in the sleep hygiene if still it's not effective and the person requires something more then we prescribe the what we call the sleeping pills or the sedatives uh, most commonly over the counter people abuse coughing syrup to be used as sleeping pills antihistaminics then alcohol is used for uh, causing sleep but these are all habit forming things and in long run they take toll on person's health when we also prescribe sedatives then we take uh, into account there is a interrupted course for example for 5 days we give sedatives 2 days are given sedatives free and we don't give sedatives more than a month although all sedatives seem to be uh, habit forming there are certain exceptions like uh, recently available drug melatonin it uh, doesn't have much action if the person is suffering from anxiety and that is why he is not able to sleep over the counter ashwagandha is also found to be safe so we threw a lot of information about sleep and sleep hygiene at you so don't forget to keep tuning into our channel to learn more about mental health i'll see you guys later